What's up dudes, Kublai Khan here, welcome back to Fallout 4 Survival Mode. Our little introduction to what this world is like, the difficulties, and the challenges. Now, last episode we were hanging out at the USAF satellite, and it turns out that we got our butts handed to us by a woman with a minigun. And uh, we're gonna try this again, sneak our way through, take some people out, but I think I'm going to use some of the other equipment that we have at our disposal to take her down. This equipment is actually of the boom kind. Only two Molotov cocktails. Holy crap. We're, uh, well, we're going to have to try this again anyway. Let's go. All right, so we are back into the facility. Now, I have a feeling that this experience on survival mode will kind of be like a Naruto movie I saw a while ago. Let me explain. In this movie, they had a character who had the ability to see the future. Now, when this character saw the future, the way that the future was relayed to her was via this dream that she would have. Or she would basically, the person in the future who was like, oh no, I'm about to die, would relay to the past person how the death occurred. So, it wasn't necessarily futuristic, like, abilities to see as much as it was just the fact that the future would tell you, hey, you died I'm so sorry that sucks, please don't die again. So anyway, things like, hey, there's purified water in here and that kind of thing. Definitely uh, fits. I don't really need an Abraxo cleaner, but we are going to have one dude strolling out in just a second, which here's a something that I didn't really think about. The hidden bars up above you is kind of like a sixth sense, isn't it? Ooh, maybe I could use this terminal. Maybe I can use this terminal. It's advanced. I cannot use this terminal. All right, pull out a gun, hide here, peeking around. So one thing we learned last episode too was that even though my character is working on guns, a security baton, ooh, we have, I was thinking that we had a baseball bat. I am wrong. Uh, so security baton it is. Being that initial single heavy hit is actually really cool, but I don't see the dude. What the fuck was that? Oh God. What the? I'm not here. I'm not here. It's all in your head. I'm not here. Okay, we're good again. God. Just gotta sneak closer. This actually probably won't work as well sneaky-wise. Which is kind of unfortunate. I don't see a dog or anything, so we'll peek our way this way. And... Hey. Don't scream. That's a scream. But we're hidden. But we're hidden. All right. Woo. That worked out pretty well. So we got our old Boston Bugle in here. We got the weird plunger that's upside down. I always wondered about this. I mean, did someone just not figure out how it works? Is that why they put it upside down like that? I mean, I get antibiotics. Oh, nice. We're excited for that. Now, I kind of wondered about this game and if um, seeing bodies are going to make people react differently anymore. I don't think it will. Handcuffs. That's really interesting. This person needed a hand. <laughs> Anywho, let's continue whacking things with a stick, shall we? There's a dog and it sees us. It's a dog, it's a dog, it's a dog, it's a dog. It's a cute puppy. Here, puppy, puppy. Oh man, if we had animal friend, that could be pretty sick in this. Hiya! Oh, it saw us for sure. We're gonna have to. Oh. Oh, oh, we're in danger now. That was the only thing. Oh, interesting. That was. They didn't really see anything else going on. I'll take a liquor bottle. We need places to store water because uh, thirsty, thirsty selves are not good. Uh oh. Oh crap. Oh crap. Here she comes. Just uh, hide over here. Nothing Wait. there now. What do you think? I don't know. Jump in the shadows. Yeah, you're probably right. Gotta cut. The shit I guess. Now don't start talking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh oh. The sneaking element has gotten very different here. You're getting paranoid. There ain't nothing here. Ah! Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Woo! I really would like to have the ability to take these guys out in a single hit. And I feel like that could happen by increasing my strength. This isn't anything like training. Or... 
How's that supposed to get me ready for this hell? <laughs> or, I just like listening to that comment. I think it's really interesting. Or, uh, I don't really necessarily want to jump up the melee, but I think sneaking would do a lot because that would give us the ability to, especially, actually, better criticals works in the case of uh, sneak attack criticals, from what I understand, because that's, at least I think so. Oh, third person, get a good view. Okay. Keep moving. Oh, God! Oh, God, it's a shotgun, too! Holy shmikes! Ow! Okay, um, hide. Find a place to hide. Think about hiding. Think about hiding. Think secret hide hidden thoughts. Pulling out the dude one. Alright, she was having fun, but we're a-okay now. Scared, huh? You should be. Man, I would love- uh-oh. It's called Burn! Great burn! Great burn! Great burn! Alright, Molotov. Worked great. Hello? Alright, I don't think they're gonna go that way, necessarily, because there's a wall of fire. Which before didn't mean much to me, but now I'm realizing that Molotov cocktails also create a barrier. Huh? That. <laughs> that protects you. Oh, oh, perfect. Ooh! That was sweet. Okay. I've been learning about how you don't want to use drugs necessarily to heal yourself. You want to use things like baked bloat fly because that's a lot better. Or hell, blood packs. So we're going to put a blood pack there instead. And a death claw steak right there too. All right, so we didn't kill Ak Ak, I'm guessing. Gotta say, that fire is still burning. That is really interesting. It's truly creating a barrier to prevent... Okay, Ak Ak's still totally alive. It's creating a barrier to prevent them from crossing. I've never thought about using that as a way to protect myself from attack. No need to hide. It'll all be over soon. Oh, oh shit. Move up now. I'll make it quick. All right, well... Oh! Oh, we're okay. We're gonna go back this way, I think. Oh, the fire is gone. Got her. All right, but that doesn't mean that they won't also pick up her stuff. They will. They totally pick up her guns too. Woo! Woo! We got him. Still in danger though. Still in some danger. Uh oh. Ow! Oh my god! Holy shit, that normally kills you immediately. Oh, god. I did a mistake. I checked my timer for a moment. And, uh, hello, scary dude! Waxed me in the head with a freaking pool cue, but didn't do much damage, which is surprising. Normally it does a lot more than that. I didn't realize that pool cues were so valuable, uh, weight ratio-wise. Okay. We're hidden. <gasps> We're hidden. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna sneak around a little bit more and uh, I'll let you know if anything comes up. Well, this guy's burnt pretty much to hell. Uh, that's kind of gross, but uh, I'm glad. I'm glad it was him and not me, so it's okay. It's interesting how many stim packs still show up. I kind of, uh, I like that. I think it's a pretty interesting thing that these stim packs are still bouncing around in all, almost all the opponents. And I mean, it makes sense because even in this world where food is can able to heal you, it can't heal your wounded bones and stuff. And now I'm parched. Woo, too dirty water, properly hydrated. Really appreciate uh, getting, ooh, what was that that came out of here? Gumdrops, I really appreciate getting the lead belly perk. Oh God, gotta love finding more. <laughs> gotta find bottles now, bottles are great. Hey, military teddy bear, I remember this guy. Take that army helmet off of you. That's actually gonna be a very useful uh, piece of armor to have. I mean, look at that. 10 damage resistance. We are putting that on. That's stronger than everything else I'm carrying. Okay, so I'm a little worried about this door here. It's a novice lock. However, I've gone through this entire place and there isn't a bed in here. So, I mean, I am stronger after all that adrenaline that we picked up. You can actually go ahead and check your stats and see the perk. I have a 5% damage increase, which you can also see reflected in the fact that the weapon now does 27 damage. Got it. Okay, rad roaches, but they don't know we're here. Quick fix will do just fine. We have a lot of ammunition. That's what's cool is ammo is certainly easy enough to come by since stuff dies faster. All right, we were able to take out every single Radroach with a single shot in Vats. That's pretty sick. 
pistols, since they're lighter, the benefit that they get... Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh god! Whoa! Whoa, okay! Alright, we've lost an arm. Um, what does that do to us? I guess it makes our, our aim shakier? Is that... I'm actually not sure exactly what that does. Oh, hi, more. Hi, other boat dude. Ah! Oh, God! I was once again looking at the thing. Oh, I gotta stop. I gotta pause more often. God. It's interesting having your arm actually broken down when the only thing that seems to be happening is that the everything's swaying a bunch now. Um, side intro or interesting fact about this. Could you imagine of getting killed from that explosion? Oh, oh. And like, that's what takes you out? Intel room key. Ooh, that's cool. And that's like, that's what it ends up taking you out? It's not the, not the bad guys. It's not all that. It's just a little mistake like that. And that's, that's cool. I like that little bit of idea from playing this. Oh, nice. A rat away right there. Cool. Oh, plenty of rad roach. Meats. This is, ended up being a very scary quite quality little break we've got. Ooh, what's in here? I've been running around looking for a leather left leg for a little while. Finally managed to find somebody with it. Give us that extra two bit of uh, damage resistance that we need. Um, I'm curious if that arm is going to uh, be super terrible to have for a long time. I, uh, I don't know exactly know. I mean, we might be able to sleep somewhere and actually make our arm come back and be fine. Ooh, that's cool. Permanently more difficult to detect when sneaking. I like that. Just a uh, mini nuke, I guess, would be... Oh, crap. I was going to say, I guess, would be good for selling, but I don't know how good for selling something is if it makes us overweight now. Okay, so we've dropped everything and picked up everything that I could. I'm actually just at the limit of weight, which is a weird thing. Uh, but I'm carrying and holding on to it because it would be useful once I get back to Sanctuary or any place to upgrade some of my armor and the like. It's interestingly, I can actually do some of these upgrades right here. So let's go ahead and uh, see if I can pop some of these up. So I'm out of leather pretty quick, but uh, there is a bunch of mole rats that were out here that I should have some hide, which I could use in order to pop up all my leather armor. Okay, so I was able to save. And actually, it's interesting. The adrenaline meter doesn't show up and say immediately losing your adrenaline when you go to sleep. In fact, it's a, it's a certain percentage per every time you do the sleeping effect. Now, so that's pretty cool, meaning that we still have that extra bonus and we were able to save. So that's, that's a nice thing, but I'm not as rested as my character normally would be. And being less rested means that they're going to have an increase in fatigue, as you can see down below. I have less AP points, but I do also have more damage. So that works out okay, but it's certainly not the best case. Also, more importantly, my arm is not fixed. So I have to, um, I thought I just used a stim pack, but apparently I just ate something else. Using a stim pack though makes me even more thirsty. Although I've fixed the problem that I had related to my arm, um, if we've seen how much more thirsty one becomes when drinking. So, excuse me, not when drinking, but when lacking, uh, using drugs, and then that happens. Luckily, we have a character who can take all the dirty water immediately, so I'm not too worried about that. Kind of an interesting, slightly different path than what we came from before. There's Concord. Uh, and it's also interesting, I started talking about this a uh, couple episodes or last episode, I don't recall exactly. The size of the world is a lot smaller than I imagined. And at first, I saw that as more of a negative thing. Um, because... You know, walking across the world would take so long and finding things and the like. Uh, but the thing is, it's an incredibly dense world. And we actually went from here all the way along here within like an episode before. I think it was about 15, 10 minutes without stopping really. And that's, I, I feel kind of important in the case of uh, this no fast travel walkthrough. Ooh. Oh, good. A plunger. That's what I thought I was going to grab. In this term of a fast travel walkthrough, uh, or excuse me, no fast travel play, uh, because it, it would get really boring anyway to make that walk differently. I mean, having to go back and forth, back and forth would suck a lot, but the Blake farm is actually really close. Um, I don't necessarily need to sleep 
you know, I'm just gonna grab some water real quick when we're here. Uh, there's Preston in the, hanging out. Do some quick water bottle fills. Take some drinking water and just drink it myself. Not a lot of rads, like nothing with the lead belly ability. So I'm kind of at that point where I, uh, I really only tend to drink straight from the water sources because I feel ill. Weakness. Oh god, that's the first time I've seen that. Remove it by taking antibiotics or visiting a doctor. Is that happened from drinking the water that was dirty? Is that why? Oh my god, look at that extra damage. Wow. Crazy high. We actually, luckily we have the antibiotics to take. But Jesus Christ, that is insane. Oh, and now I'm thirsty. Welcome to this eternal cycle of getting sick and drinking from water again. All right. Why did I just get a massive 18 radiation increase? Because of what I drank? No, it's just, I guess I was near a part of the water that would get me really radiated. You feel better, but still parched. I guess there is a small chance that drinking dirty water will make you sick. And then you need to take the antibiotics, otherwise you take insanely higher damage. I was expecting that um, something like that wouldn't necessarily show up as often. Uh, but I knew that eating uncooked food that would happen, but I guess it would probably fit the same role where it happens sometimes. Like, it's uh, it's not a common thing. Uh, when we get to a chemistry table, I'd be happy to demonstrate uh, some of the new things that you can build in chemistry and why actually going down the intelligence path might be pretty cool for our character to survive, depending on what build we do or if we stick with this one. Now I'm at a point where I still don't necessarily want to make purified water because I'd rather have more water even if it likely would get me sick because I have the, you know, the radiation perk that protects me from that and I have some more antibiotics so I'm, I'm okay and would rather just have more water period. Now we also can get some more food too which is definitely going to be helpful. Here's a chemistry station that we can go to. Now, drugs suddenly become very different than buff jet and buff tats. Herbal anodyne improves resistance to insomnia and weakness. Weakness, you just saw, was when I had that sickness. Now I can actually have herbal anodyne and remove the problem of that without having to take more my, um, some more antibiotics. But we have antimicrobials, herbal stimulants, robot repair, and that kind of thing. Um, but what's really important is now you got to go into perk one chemist to get antibiotics or for stim pack and they're more expensive and so it's actually harder to get them and it makes sense to go into the demolition direction because if you go ahead and look at that option uh excuse me not just demolition but the chemist let's see here he is pretty far down the limit but it will really keep your character alive and have a lot of true benefits to them uh the world is getting really flickery right now probably a good time to turn in the mission the world's going insane. Gotta look back this way. Thanks, Blake. I just want to trade a few things. Sure. Oh, that's cool. Blake actually lets us do the workshop thing now, too. Now I'm going to do some selling and the like, and then I'm going to see if I can take an... I'm going to build myself a Blake bed because I need to save before this goes any more much, insane. But... So I was thinking about the cap collector perk or the charisma perks and how much more useful they are now because we can't carry as many things, and so it's harder to find stuff to sell. I mean, I'm gonna sell one mini nuke, and I'm pretty, or one uh, power cell, and I'm pretty sure that that's gonna basically provide everything that I need, but still, it's, uh, it's kind of a wild idea about how these other perks are suddenly more useful to use, when before I that they were just kind of like, I, I, I almost want them to buy more, and for me to get worse prices, because then at least I could sell more stuff. Now this is ability that I've never actually picked up, which is understanding the awareness of your enemy's specific weaknesses. And I think that'll be more useful because I've never done it, so I don't even know what it is off the top of my head. Which will be so much more important when we're playing in this style of game. Now check out this little outfit for a, a character. Oh my god, rad stags are- <gasps> Oh god, that's terrifying. Oh no. Uh oh. We're gonna have to be in a fight pretty soon. Here it is! Oh god. Alright, we're gonna help the doe because that rad scorpion is probably gonna take us all out. It's- we're in danger. There it is. We're in caution now. We're actually okay. 
There it is. It's up there. All right. It's way out of the way out of the way. Let's just go ahead and sell some stuff. Oh god, that was close. Looking to make a deal. One thing I find kind of interesting through this too is making sure that whatever I sell is actually kind of heavier than some of the other things. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this, for example. Uh, I got rid of the mini nuke because that's 12 pounds. It's not really. I shouldn't have been carrying that. I'm imagining shipments are gonna be extremely more useful now. To oh god, it's here again. It's attacking the cow. Oh, good luck, Connie. You're not an immortal character. You know, we're just gonna close the gate. Oh, stop the- Oh, God. All that, luckily we just sold a second ago, but... Damn, man. Out of nowhere. Okay, so we finally did that trade that I was looking to do before we were just demolished by the freaking rad scorpion. God, that was out of nowhere. Okay, so... Now we're on to the quest. I felt like this was a pretty good demonstration of what's going on within survival mode. Uh, as we're running this way, I'll finish up my kind of final thoughts in relation to when I was talking about uh, permadeath and survival mode. The idea about survival mode versus permadeath mode is let's take a moment at what happened with the Rad Scorpion. If that was permadeath, that moment would have been the end of this character. Which uh, would have made it so, but the character would have been less likely to die in that fight, right? Because it would have been on normal mode and the difficulties would have just been shifted around. Now, I like the fact that we actually had the character. I love how I can just carry fire through the air. We had a character that was able to be put into place and go up against this Rad Scorpion and lose. It creates a fear that was a little bit different than what originally kind of existed. Something that I, I really like that. I like how there is that extra challenge that was then provided that was not there in some of the actual permadeath ones where we would have ran away versus having that feeling of fear when we were just selling. It just came out of nowhere and suddenly that was terrifying that we had to deal with that. So, in that consideration, I feel like the story of our this character right now is pretty interesting. She's creating a survival area because she needs it to actually make it anywhere. Rather than it being part of her character, it's just something that needs to be done. And so a character that chooses not to do this will have a very different play style where it's not about gun nut or anything. It's about finding better weapons and One then the hunting those kinds of people. Set up some and sleep, you know, becomes such that bigger change where suddenly it's all about finding Don't beds in the world much. rather than making beds at certain sanctuary She's locations. I'm tired from lack of sleep. I mean, antibiotics and that kind of thing. Like, this, the type of character that we become. Do you have to find antibiotics? Do you have to buy antibiotics? Do you make your antibiotics? These sort of things really, I think, change up what we would typically see in that permadeath. Which is why I feel like if we're doing a survival, it would potentially make a rain. cooler story than uh, what the permadeaths have been doing. So, I think that's, uh, I like that. I mean, wake, having her character wake up in the morning and the first thing that she has to do is get some water from the river. Like, that's kind of cool. Also, I saw some bottles over here that I uh, missed earlier. Right on the table. Some people were having beer. And it turns out that now we're going to fill these with some dirty water. Which maybe eventually I'll be able to, you know, get enough bottles that I can get purified water. Or we can generate those sweet water generating um, purifiers and now just have tons of... Of purified water available for us it's just nice apparently I can only do oh I am I not allowed to do any more water that's an interesting thing to be run into anyway so dudes that's kind of my feelings related to what's going on with survival I want to know what characters you guys you know build wise you think you want to see I think that's gonna be very interesting and really change out how the characters are played because a character you know with the pistol is a very different or a gun nut versus a, a science intelligence versus a charisma character now really you're gonna play very very differently and uh, because it's just how you're able to focus on your survival well i mean there'll be crossovers as well but it's you know i would rather get better at wasteland whisperer than my pistols if i am you know a charisma character who actually uses melee weapons or something so anyway dudes thank you so much for watching it was a total joy to have you here let me know what you think about in relation to all this and of course if you liked what you saw please leave a like if you want to see more hit the subscribe button underneath me and may the ground rise to meet your feet may the wind always be at your back and may the sun shine warmly on your sexy sexy face dudes see you later bye <laughs>